Alrighty guys, part one of the endgame, or if you're watching this as a beginner's guide walkthrough, this is going to be part 11, but it's part one of the endgame. So, once we've defeated Katava, make sure you talk to Lani. She's going to give you the ability to be able to uh, get an extra two skill points. And then what you want to type in, um, if you're following the guide, you'll be perfectly fine on it. Oh, there's the puppet mistress over here where we didn't uh, claim our... Um, skill point so the puppet mistress over here is going to be in a previous act so if you're following this as a guide uh, you guys might have already claimed it. i just didn't talk to the npc to claim uh my reward over here so uh where is that puppet mistress is in act uh where is it it's technically this is act one but we just have to talk to the npc and we get our reward from one of them another Okay, there we go. So, one thing you want to do in the very beginning is type in slash passives. So, I, I've done every single one. If you followed this as a full walkthrough, you've had every single one completed. The one exception is deal with the bandits. We side with the Lyra so we don't get a skill point uh, from that. That one actually gives you two. Uh, but what we're trying to do now is the actual end end game. So, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this. Well, eventually, we can spec out and grab this. But for now, I want to get the increased chance. Uh, so... Once we type in slash passives and we got everything completed, because you want to do that ASAP because skill points are good, uh, what we're going to do is, once we've killed Katava, our next step is to set sail from Oriath. So we're going to go do the end game. Now, I'll show you guys how the end game works. So basically, we'll wake up. And then you talk to her, and then you can get this crafting recipe. And then we're just going to move on up and we're going to be doing the maps. I guess there's Lily that we can talk to as well. She's at the top. You can't use any movement abilities here. But we're about to show off how the map system works. And this is going to be different for every single person in terms of like kind of your progression. So I can't really hold your hand in this um, state because you're going to get maps that are different. The maps layouts are different, but I'll at least kind of show you guys how the basics of the map system works so it's a bunch of npcs that you can talk to but kyrak is going to be an important uh, character so he's going to give us a map in the very beginning if you guys remember i was telling you guys pick up all the maps uh depending on which maps you already have you don't want to take a map that you already have so if i already have bone crypt let's not get bone crypt um but let's see arena bone crypt and we can grab plateau because i don't think we have that one so we're gonna grab plateau so how this works is at the very beginning, we're going to want to at least do the map at at least a blue map. So the reason why we want to do it is it's going to give us a bonus. So if I hold Alt on my keyboard, you'll see that the Atlas map is in, uh, incomplete and the bonus objective is incomplete. What this means is that we can get a passive Atlas point if we actually do the bonus objective. The bonus objective in the very beginning is to do maps that are blue. Then it'll be to do maps that are going to be uh rare maps and then it'll be doing rare maps that are corrupted so it's going to make the game a little bit harder when we have certain roles you need to watch out for the modifiers so if i hold all i can see the modifier this one just makes it so the monsters have more life that's a relatively easy one because it doesn't really make your game that much harder um sure the monsters have more hp but it's not like the monsters are going to pop healing potions or anything you're going to kill them the ones that you need to be watching out for for majority of build is reflect damage that one will get you killed a lot of times or if it's um you are inflicted with vulnerability or elemental weakness or any sort of downside where if the monster hits you it's just going to make you take a lot more damage or if you have too many mods where the monsters deal uh x amount of damage as a element and then it also does monsters do more damage or like are way faster these can start stacking you'll get more items and more rarity and more map monster pack size however the game will become more harder so there's a risk to the reward um so in the very beginning you uh you want to use this usually in your hideout but there's a map device you can click on it and what you want to do is you want to put in your map in here and again make sure that they're all blue if they're not blue in the very beginning you can take an orb of transmutation right click on it and then left click on it and now the monsters are going to deal extra physical as fire well make sure all your resistances are capped because as we go towards the end game our resistances kind of get messed up. Like my resistances right now, huh? They're not perfect. You can see over here, our resistance of 56, 42. We can fix this though. It's not that big of a deal, but I want to show you guys kind of how the map system works. And so our goal is to defeat Please the map boss. Yourself, 
Okay. So right now this is a uh, delirium, so it'll make the monsters kind of hard, but I'll see once the monsters start getting a little bit too difficult, if I want to, I can uh, change it. Okay, let's go through a mess, so we can have Onslaught now, just another flask. There's a flask that we picked up with one of the uh, campaign quests, but it's just going to give us more uh, movement and attack speed, cast speed, not that the cast speed really matters, but it'd be nice to have. And we're just going to move on. So we're coming up to the boss. I'm just going to end this delirium because I don't want to fight the boss in the delirium because it makes things much more difficult. We'll see if we get any rewards from this. <laughs> no rewards from that. It's just a lot of boots. <laughs> hey, maybe these boots are actually pretty good. Our boots right now, they definitely could be using an upgrade. So I wouldn't mind just checking out a couple of these. And all of these, even though they're all assassin boots, they're not all going to be the same. Ideally, we try to look for things that have... Spell suppression is not bad, but... Um, we're looking for is on boots in particular for most builds is going to be a bunch of resistances and life that's usually what you want or eventually what you can get which is really really good um you can get things that have like onslaught or tailwind but these are going to be something that uh, well it's not just going to drop with all this stuff <laughs> but your chances of actually like just finding an item on the ground and identifying it are honestly going to be pretty slim but hey we at least uh checked out all of these to see if there was any upgrade and there was, really wasn't anything. All right, so now we're gonna go to the arena here. So how it works is you just kill a bunch of monsters. If you play Diablo, think of it kind of like a greater rift, but you don't have to kill a bunch of monsters to fill it up. You can just go straight to the boss and kill the boss. And that's gonna give you your Atlas uh, passive point. So we'll go ahead and fight this boss over here. We'll show you how it works. And the map that you get may be a little bit different than you know my map, it's gonna be random. But I'll show you kind of how the Atlas works. And I'll tell you my strategy that I will be doing for my currency. Because everyone has their own way of kind of getting a, you know their currency. Everyone's got their own strategy for their endgame if they played the game before. And I'll do the one that I think is the most beginner friendly. And I'll, I'll kind of explain it. Which is basically map sustain. Because trading maps is not fun for a beginner. <laughs> so... What you want to try to do is sustain maps. And what that means is we're going to constantly go in and be able to keep on playing maps versus, oh, we ran out of maps. I got to go trade with other players. That's usually not what beginners find fun. I hate trading maps as well. Unless it, I'm buying a map that's super expensive, sometimes people just don't respond. And the reason why that they, they don't respond is because the thing that you're trying to buy is worth so little to them because the time it would take for them to go and open up the trade they can get a much better uh like you know uh, amount of resource in the time like you might trade for like one chaos orb uh but they're just like i'm too busy i don't really want that anymore like it's not worth my time and if they're at the end game more likely since they are selling the maps they have better things to do and it's annoying because they still list the item it's just the reality of path of exile but Anyways, once we complete the uh, map, we actually are able to defeat the boss. We're going to get an Atlas point. So what we're going to do, and this is my strategy over here. There is a um, node. There's actually a few that I really like getting. So stream of consciousness is pretty good. So I like to rush grabbing this. Um, I also think shrines are excellent. So this is basically a whole nother skill tree. I know it seems overwhelming, but I promise you it's really not that scary. So what you want to actually go for is wandering path. This uh, is really good for beginners. And the reason why I always recommend beginners to get this is wandering path makes it so notable atlas passives grant nothing. So, so the uh, bigger ones like these, um, does it actually say notable? Okay, so these are all the notable. If I type in the word notable, you can see all of the ones that are flashing. Those are considered notable. So it makes all of those do nothing. However, in return, or is it? Uh, lost track of where that one was. Okay, here it is. So they grant nothing, but we have 100% increased effect of small Atlas passes. <coughs> what this means is that uh, all of these small nodes called adjacent map drop chance. Uh, can I just type in drop chance? Okay, so you'll see all these ones that are highlighted over here are all going to be able to give us 2% chance. But remember, it's going to be doubled when we grab that node. So it's doubled. In total, we will always have 100% chance for our map to drop. And it is 
pretty massive to complete your atlas and I think it's one of the best things to get in the very beginning. Another thing that I really like getting in the beginning is shrines. Uh, I like shrines and strong boxes. Strong boxes are good to get uh, currency. Uh, however, I would personally rush doing shrines because as you're able to clear up more content faster and the shrines will also spawn more monsters. But remember, notables will do nothing. So eventually, uh, yeah, that will be something that you can unspec out of if you want to. Uh, but at least getting this one, how I'm going to be playing this is I'm going to put one point here. We're going to path over and maybe i can just put like a building because that'd probably make things much much easier so you guys can see it so in case you want to do something i'm going to go here and grab this so every map will always have one shrine right and then i'm going to just grab that one and if i want to path over here it's kind of optional if you want to get the I, I would go this way but it doesn't really matter which way you choose because there's so many of these uh what uh uh what is it called uh connected map so there's, there's a bunch of these, so you can go this way, you can go whatever way. I'm just gonna go this way here so I get these shrines. And then um, we're gonna go from here and then I can go up and we can just go over here. And then again, we are gonna be rushing uh, this one. So you can go from here and then you can go here if you want to, just because this gives you a chance for the maps to be duplicated. And again, that's just, these are all doubled, so it's like 1%. And then you want to grab this. So basically shrines first, so grab these shrine ones. Um, essences are great. It's kind of up to you and what you want to. There's a lot of freedom here, but I know for like a new player, you're just like, well, just tell me what I go for. All right, so basically, yes. Uh, I'll, I'll link something uh, down below for my strategy. So I'm going to get that first, and then I'm going to do strong boxes, and I'm going to do shrines. Those are the two things that I want to focus in on. And then once I start completing more, you can kind of choose what you want to do. Sometimes I li literally mix it up. Beyond is getting some heat right now, like as in like a lot of people are thinking Beyond is really good because there is a uh, another... Uh, node is over here where beyond portals uh don't have a unique boss but they have uh um uh, the portals have 50 percent less merging radius so this one apparently is something that i think a lot of people may want to look at and something that people are talking about i check reddit and stuff sometimes so sometimes there's people like dude this is the new op thing honestly what it comes down to is anyone can upload a youtube video and show like insane results right and it's going to make the video look really good but really stick it over the course of time Every single mechanic is more than likely going, you can always highlight one good like um, league mechanic. And it's up to you on your play style, which one you wanna choose. So I've showed you guys the passive point and how it works. Again, you just complete the Atlas bonus. Now, there's also an Atlas if I click on over here. And if you need to access any of these, you can click on the menu to access the Atlas passive and it's always over here. Um, once you open up one of the Atlas. So this is the Atlas. And our whole goal in the end game is to actually complete as much as the Atlas as possible. We've only done one out of 115. There's actually more maps than that. But we've completed this one and you'll see that there's a check mark. The bonus is to kill a magic or higher version of this map. So since I've already done this one and in the very beginning, I wouldn't worry about clearing out the whole thing. Um, I'll do one more map just so you can kind of see for efficiency. And you don't always have to come to this area. You can go to your own hideout and you can place the... Uh, actual uh little device the map device and you can place it in your own hideout it should be over here i don't know why it, it, it's not like appearing because it, it might just be a glitch anyways you can place this in your hideout if you go over here and you hit edit and you go to well, i don't know why it's like looking so weird right now so there's a bunch of decorations and it you have all of the npcs and different things that you can put these are just decorations you can put whatever you want um, there's all these different things you can move the waypoint and it's kind of fun just to customize your own um area but uh, you can do everything I, I downloaded this one uh, there's a bunch that you can download and they're all free uh, you can customize your hideout to your liking there are microtransactions that you can get like different little benches and stuff but it, it doesn't give you any advantage in the game so your whole goal is to basically do these maps. If you want to come over here, you can do it. I mean, in the very beginning, a lot of people just like do it because then they don't want to mess with their own hideout. But you want to complete these maps. And if one of the modifiers is too hard, like let's say, um, you know, I really need exposure and I want to roll that one off. Or like this one over here. Uh, I'm like, ooh, that extra physical damage is fired. That's too hard. I'm dying on this map. Or, you know, maybe I'm feeling like I'm already not tanky enough. I can use a orb of alteration and re-roll just the blue things. It only works on a magic item. This 
rerolls a magic item with new modifiers, so I can do this. So now it has Lunaris Fanatics, it's a, that's a monster type. And then players have reduced effect of non-curse auras from skills, so it's reducing our auras. Um, and if you run out of maps, what do you do? Because the whole goal is to basically stay in maps. That's your form of endgame for the most part. So what you want to do is, if you do run out of maps, you can go to Kyrak, and you can purchase maps from him. And usually most of these will cost like orbs of chances. And you can hold alt over here as well to see which ones you have not completed. The ideal goal is to complete as many maps as you possibly can. And then you want to go and put in your Atlas points. That's the main goal of the end game for Path of Exile. But we also have on our passive, you'll notice that there are still technically two more Trial of Ascendancies to complete. So you can also do your other Trial of Ascendancy if you follow this as a guide. You can already right now, if you want to, you can go to the Aspirants Plaza and do the uh, the third lab, which I will I will do, uh, not in this part because I feel like it's kind of redundant. Yeah, I've already shown you guys two of the labs. Just go ahead and do the next lab. The Eternal Labyrinth will cost a Offering to the Goddess. You can get this as a drop by just playing the game. There are trials inside of the maps that if you do, at the very end, it'll guarantee you a Offering to the Goddess. Or you can spend one or two Chaos Orbs and just buy this off a of player and then you can just do it. Uh, my suggestion is just get one or two Chaos Orbs. It's gonna save you some time from doing it because doing that, the, the uh, labyrinth areas the um, trials can be a little bit challenging at the end game but if you want to do it by all means go ahead and do it so it's up to you on uh, how you want to tackle that but you definitely want to do your other trials the other one you should do maybe at like level 75 ish maybe 80 uh, but the, ne the next one you can do right now in fact i'm going to do it pretty much after this but i'm not going to show it because it's kind of the same thing we've been doing uh, but I will show you one more map. So I'll show you kind of how we're doing it. Remember, you want to get as many of these maps done as possible. So you want to throw it in here and just hit activate. If you're wondering what these little buttons are, we'll mess around with that later. I'll kind of explain that. But your whole goal is to kind of just progress. And I'll also have like a... Um, so I'll, I'll come back. Uh, well, let's just go do this real quick. And pretty much your whole goal is to, again, kill a bunch of stuff, go to the boss... And you see this area is 68 or 69, so that's totally fine. But you don't want to be in an area where the monster level is far below yours because there's a bunch of XP penalties. Basically, you get very little XP if the monsters are significantly under. Ideally, they're about the same. It goes up until 83. But you can see our damage uh, might be a little bit lacking right now, I want to say. Let's see. So we can start looking for upgrades very soon. I mean, I have that Divine Orb, but... I haven't bought anything since we completed the campaign. And this is still, like, relatively respectable. Sometimes you'll run into a monster that feels insanely tanky. And that's normal in Path of Exile. Sometimes you just get a bunch of mods that just make them super tanky. And pick up all your maps. You're gonna want them. You can also convert your maps to other maps. Oh, nice, we got some more maps. Awesome. So this area was a dead end. We're just gonna keep on continuing. Oh, wait, that was, that was the area? Oh, okay. I was thinking we had to fight um, Doreso, but we're good. Okay, so we actually just completed that map. Some maps were super short, like that one was just it was just done instantly. So we have another Atlas point. So we're gonna keep on going up. Like I said, I'll try to pin a thing in the comment that shows you kind of my pathing. Again, I'm just gonna get this one shrine, and then I'm going to eventually once I get this, then I'm going to unspec out of this one. You also get refund points over here, and your whole goal is to just keep on doing the atlas and the maps will usually drop adjacent to the map and eventually we're going to get these things called watch zones but i won't go too far into how crazy this game can get but basically just keep doing maps and um, i'll also put in the pin uh, just some extra skill points that i'm going to be putting in like where i'm going to be going and then that way you guys will have something as um i'm going to probably get like a couple more levels and i'll just keep on doing maps your whole goal is just keep on slamming on those maps you're going to get more xp and more level ups and uh you're gonna get a lot stronger. And what you wanna to try to do is get as many Chaos Orbs as possible because in the next part, we're gonna be talking more about upgrades and I'll show you the pieces of gear that I got that significantly upgraded our gear. But right now, Thunder Fist is not too expensive. It's like 30-ish Chaos. So if you can get a Thunder Fist uh, for 30, 35-ish Chaos Orbs, that's not too bad as right now. Later, it'll go for like 10 Chaos Orbs, five Chaos Orbs. It becomes cheaper as time progresses. There are certain items that will go down in price and there are certain items that may go up in price. So. 
Um, my suggestion, if you want to know what items are worth, I really like this website called Pewee.ninja. You can go to the currency and you can see kind of which items and which, you know, things like if you want to go to unique weapons, which ones are selling for and how much are they selling for. Or if you, you get an item and you want to know what it's worth, this is a great tool. You can also use the price checker. Again, it's called uh, Awakened Path of Exile Trade. And you can see what maps, which maps are worth stuff. This is a great website. It's Pewee.ninja. And I'll show you most of the the things that you'd want. There's also these new tattoos. And you can start maybe engaging in the league mechanic. I'm going to do some more, and I'll let you guys know if it's worth doing. Because, um, well, uh, they already said they're buffing it. So, obviously, it's not as good as probably people want. And so, they're taking maybe some feedback. So, hopefully, we'll get much more uh, buffs very, very soon. But that's basically what you want to do towards the end game. Just keep on slamming out maps, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to do... I can, right now, I could probably do my trial, so I can probably do the trial right now, and then I'm going to eventually do the next trial once I hit like 75-ish, but uh, pretty much you're just going to be making some progressions. We're going to be talking more about the Pantheon as we're going to be able to get the uh, ability to be immune to you being frozen, and I'll show you guys how to do that in pretty much the next few parts over here, but that's the main goal of the end game is to slam out maps and just get currency. That's your main goal. Anyways, thanks for tuning in for part one of the end game or part 11 of our full walkthrough and guide. Drop a like on your way out and I'll see you in the next one.